Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hola, bienvenidos a tu clase de español. Soy Brenda Romagnello, tu profesora. Hello, welcome to your Spanish class. My name is Brenda Romagnello. Today we're going to have a look at the possessive adjectives in Spanish and then the different meanings of su and sus. We use the possessive adjectives in Spanish and for that we say los adjetivos posesivos to establish belonging in Spanish. Yes, to establish ownership or belonging or in certain cases, for example, when you talk about your family or your friends, we use it to establish relationships. Yes, for example, my mother, your father, etc. Let's have a look at the possessive adjectives in Spanish. So, to say my in Spanish, we are going to say the singular is mi, mi, and the plural form is mis, mis, mi, mis. To say your informal, so remember we're going to have two different yous in Spanish. You informal, which is an informal register with tú, and then a formal register with usted, yes, that we use for uh, formal situations. So your, the possessive adjective for tú would be your, and we say in Spanish singular tú and plural tus. Don't worry, we're going to talk about this difference, why do we have a singular and plural in a minute. So going back to the possessive adjectives, we're going to say tú for singular and tus for plural. Then we're going to have your for the formal register, which is the same as to say his and her. His and her, your formal will be singular su and plural sus. Su, sus. Our in Spanish is going to be the singular, we're going to have the masculino nuestro and the femenino nuestra. Nuestro, nuestra. And the plural form is going to be nuestros, nuestras. Nuestros, nuestras. Then for you all in Spain, which is vosotros, remember that we have you all in Spain, we say vosotros, and if we want to use the possessive adjective for vosotros, your, we would say the femenino singular vuestra and the masculino singular vuestro. Vuestro, vuestra. And the plural form is going to be vuestros, vuestras. Vuestros, vuestras. And then remember that we're going to have you all in Latin America is ustedes. If we want to say and talk about the possessive adjective for ustedes in Latin America, we're going to say your. And also uh, we are going to use the same possessive adjective for their, their, either femenino and masculino. And we're going to say the singular is su and the plural sus. Su and sus. As you can see here, we have different different people sharing the same possessive adjective, specifically, particularly with su and sus. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But something extremely important to point out about uh, possessive adjectives in Spanish is that what we are matching, why do we have so many different forms? So for, for vosotros, nosotros, you can see that we have four different possessive adjectives for these specific subjects. And the reason is because we're not possessing uh, we're not matching the, the subject, the person, rather we are matching what we are possessing. Yeah, so we are matching in number and also in gender what we are possessing or the relationship that we want to establish and not the person speaking. Let's have a look at some examples so you can see exactly what I mean. So remember, we match the possessive adjective in gender and number with what we possess instead of the person speaking. So we're going to say Nuestra familia es grande. Nuestra familia es grande. As you can see here, familia is femenino singular and we want to say our family. So it doesn't matter if we are saying nosotros, which is the masculino, 
we have to say nuestra familia because familia what we are owning or the relationship that we want to talk about familia is singular and femenino can you see that here that's why we have to say nuestra familia it's incorrect incorrecto to say nuestro familia okay why because familia is what we are possessing in this case so we have to say nuestra familia es grande let's have a look at another example nuestras hijas son inteligentes nuestras hijas son inteligentes our daughters are intelligent or smart as you can see in this case what we are possessing or what we're talking about is hijas which is in the plural femenino form that's why we have to say nuestras the next example we have nuestro hijo tiene cinco años nuestro hijo tiene cinco años our son is five years old as you can see now we're talking about hijo and we are still saying our but we have to say nuestro because hijo is masculino and singular and in the last example we have nuestros hijos son inteligentes remember that in spanish whenever we have the masculino plural is usually for both not only for masculino yes if you have all sons and in plural but it also is the general way that we talk about a noun in spanish so hijos in this case could also mean children or kids so it could be mixed genders in this case if you have two daughters and two sons they are your hijos no your your children in spanish we use the masculino plural also for general but we are going to say nuestros hijos son inteligentes nuestros hijos because we are here matching hijos which is in the plural and is also masculino as you can see here as a consequence we're gonna have four different ways to say our in spanish can you tell me what they are to say how do we say our in spanish we have four different <laughs> there we go four different forms yes we're gonna have nuestro nuestra nuestros nuestras and remember that will depend how we use them will depend on what we're talking about what we are possessing now let's talk about tú i don't know if you have noticed but we have tú with uh, the tilde yes with the written accent and tú without the tilde without that written accent and what is the difference between these two as you can see tú with the little written accent means you yes yeah, so that is the subject that is a person that is a personal pronoun the second personal personal pronoun that we have in spanish which means you and tú is informal register so we use it in, in, in informal situations and then tú without that written accent is a possessive adjective and we are going to use it when as we were doing in the previous examples when we want to establish a possession or a relationship for example within our family if i say tú casa then that means your house and we don't need to write a tilde a written accent in that tú and if i say tú eres marta see you are marta here we are using the the person tú means you in this case you are marta something else that we need to talk about is vosotros vosotros means you all in spain and in latin america we don't use vosotros we use ustedes so just like vosotros all the possessive adjectives for vosotros which mean, which would actually mean in english your okay uh, all these possessive adjectives in as, as spanish will only be used in spain specifically and we also have four just like with nosotros can you remember those we're gonna say vuestro vuestra vuestros and vuestras so vuestro vuestra vuestros and vuestras would only be used in spain for example vuestro tío es gerardo vuestro tío es gerardo so your uncle is gerardo vuestra profesora es romina vuestra profesora es romina 
Your teacher is Romina. Vuestros carros son grandes. Vuestros carros son grandes. Your cars are big. Vuestras amigas son guapas. Vuestras amigas son guapas. Your friends are good looking. The meaning of su and sus depend on the context and could mean his, her, your, your for formal register, your for the plural, and also their. Let's have a look at some examples. Tengo novio. Su nombre es Javier. As you can see here, context will help us a lot to have a look at what these su or sus mean. If you say tengo novio, that means I have a boyfriend. So we know that when I say su nombre, I'm referring to the boyfriend. So in this case, we know that su means his name is Javier. Let's have a look at, at another example. Nuestra abuela es Gladys. Nuestra abuela es Gladys. Su esposo es José. What do you think su means here? Nuestra abuela es Gladys. Our grandmother is Gladys. And then we're talking about her husband. Yes, yeah? so we're going to say her husband is José. Mucho gusto, señor. ¿Cuál es su nombre? ¿Cuál es su nombre? What do you think su means here? Mucho gusto. Nice to meet you, sir. What is your name? And this is a formal situation. It means your. Ustedes son de Francia. Ustedes son de Francia. Sus nombres son franceses. Sus nombres son franceses. As you can see here, context, we have ustedes. So we know that sus nombres son franceses, see? So uh, your names are French. Are, are you from France? Yes. We know that your names, uh, your names would be sus in this case. And the last one, tengo tres hijos. Sus nombres son María, Pedro y Luis. Again, when we say tengo tres hijos and then we are naming these children, yes, I have three kids and now I'm talking about their names, we're talking about their. So sus in this case means their. Their names are María, Pedro and Luis. Muy bien, es hora de practicar. Vamos a hacer algunos ejercicios. Now it's time to practice. Let's do some exercises. Completa los espacios en blanco con el adjetivo posesivo correspondiente. So now you have to fill in the blanks with the corresponding possessive adjective. Respuesta. Ella es mi mamá. Ellos son mis padres. Nuestra familia es muy grande. Tu abuela es muy dulce. Pedro y Luis son nuestros tíos. Sus primos son muy amables. Su abuelo es Manuel y sus tías son Julia y Ana. Su hermana es Clara. Mi prima Sofía es muy bonita. Su hermano mayor es Germán. Vuestra hermana es Rosa. Vuestros tíos tienen una casa grande en Madrid. Ok, so that is all for today. I really hope that now you understand how to use the possessive adjectives in Spanish. Thank you very much for watching this class. Muchísimas gracias y nos vemos en la próxima. I will see you next class. Adiós, hasta luego. Hola, soy Brenda Romagnello, tu profesora de español. Hi, my name is Brenda Romagnello and I'm your Spanish teacher. Today we're going to have a look at some basic conversation questions and answers to talk about you and your family. One of the common questions that always come up whenever you're having a conversation with Spanish speakers is about you and your family. Who do you live with? Uh, do you have any siblings? Do you have pets? 
all these sort of questions are basic conversational questions that always come up whenever we are talking to people in general and that is not the exception when you're talking to Spanish speakers as well. Today I'm going to help you to know which, uh, what questions these questions are so that you can also ask your Spanish friends when you're in conversations with them and then we'll have a look at potential answers so that you can also improve your Spanish and your communication and conversational skills. As you're going to talk about you and your family, let's have a look at some vocabulary for family members in Spanish. Repeat after me. Repite después de mí. Madre. Madre. Mamá. Mamá. Padre. Padre. Papá. Papá. So the difference between madre and mamá padre and papa is of course that madre and padre are a little bit more formal and mamá y papá are a little bit more informal. Hijo, hijo, hija, hija. Remember in Spanish the H is silent so as you can see in hijo and hija we don't pronounce the H here it's not hijo or hija yes <laughs> it's just hijo, hija. Hermano, hermano, hermana, hermana, tío, tío, tía, tía, sobrino, sobrino, sobrina, sobrina, primo, primo, prima, prima, abuelo, Abuelo, abuela, abuela, bisabuelo, bisabuelo, bisabuela, bisabuela, nieto, nieto, nieta, nieta. Now we're going to learn some adjectives that we can use to describe, for example, brothers and sisters and also children, yes, your children, whether they are uh, an uh, only child or for example to say that they are the oldest, the eldest, the youngest, the one in the middle, etc. Único, único, única, única, mayor, mayor, la del medio, la del medio, Menor, menor, gemelo, gemelo, gemela, gemela, mellizo, mellizo, melliza, melliza. For twins in Spanish we're gonna have gemelos and mellizos. So gemelos are identical twins and mellizos are going to be fraternal twins. Let's see how we can use this vocabulary in sentences uh, to describe your family members, especially when we're talking about sons and daughters, if you want to say you are a, an only child or if you, have, if you are the oldest or the youngest, if you have older siblings or younger siblings. Por ejemplo, soy hijo único, soy hija única, See, sí, I'm an only child, soy la hija mayor. Soy el hijo del medio. Soy la hija menor. Tengo un hermano mayor. Tengo una hermana mayor. Tengo dos hermanos menores. Tengo dos hermanas mayores. Soy la hija del medio. Tengo un hermano mayor y una hermana menor. Si sí, aquí hija es opcional. Here hija is op optional. You can say soy la del medio. Soy el del medio. Eh, si sí, I'm, I'm in the middle. <laughs> eh, tengo un hermano mayor y tengo una hermana menor. Si sí, be careful here also when you say hermano. When you want to say a brother, we have to say un hermano. It's, es incorrecto. It's incorrect to say uno hermano. 
So those are basically your uh, immediate family members. Now let's have a look at your in-laws or when you get married or when people get married, what are the relationships, these new family additions and how to say those in Spanish. Suegro, suegro, suegra, suegra. So suegro is father-in-law, suegra, mother-in-law. Nuera, nuera is just the femenino form and that means daughter-in-law. Yerno, yerno, yerno is son-in-law. Esposo, esposo, esposa, esposa. Ex-esposo, ex-esposo, ex-esposa, ex-esposa. Marido significa husband, so it's a sinónimo, it's a sinónim of esposo and mujer is wife and it also, remember, a sinónim is esposa. Prometido, prometido, prometida, prometida. Sí, prometido is fiancé and prometida fiancé. <laughs> novio, novio, novia, novia. Amante, madrastra, madrastra, padrastro, padrastro. Okay, that's a long list of vocabulary, but that's basically all the family members that you can possibly have, most family members that you can have in Spanish. ¿Cómo es tu familia? What is your family like? In Spanish, whenever we want to say something general, for example, children or kids, or if you want to talk about your grandchildren, or if you want to talk about uh, your parents, etc., we're going to use the masculino plural for a general in Spanish. If I ask, ¿Tienes hijos? Do you have sons? Yeah, will be the literal translation because we know that hijo is son in the singular and masculino, so then hijos uh, will pro probably mean sons, yes, yeah? so the plural for the hijo. But in Spanish, if it's in a question, it means do you have children, okay? Do you have children? It could be both sons and daughters. Let's have a look at another example. ¿Tienes hermanos? ¿Tienes hermanos? Here we are using the plural masculine hermanos for general information. We aren't asking if you have brothers, but rather if you have siblings. So a possible answer to this would be C. Sí, tengo dos hermanos y dos hermanas. Tengo dos hermanos y dos hermanas. Yes, I do. I have two brothers and two sisters. So in this case, even if we're asking for hermanos, yes, the general would be we're asking for siblings. So if you have brothers and sisters, you need to specify both. Let's say that if you want to talk about your siblings and you only have one, then you are going to use the non-specific article a, yes, or an in English. We're going to say un o una, un and una, which also means one in Spanish, okay? So you can say, tengo un hermano, tengo un hermano, see, I have a brother, or I have one brother, tengo una hermana, tengo una hermana, I have a sister. So remember, that is not correct to say uno before the masculine singular noun, so you cannot say Tengo uno tío, tengo uno hermano, tengo uno primo. You have to say un here. Tengo un tío, tengo un hermano, tengo un primo. Now, if you have many siblings, you can use mayor for older and menor for younger. Remember to place the adjective after what we are describing, so be careful with the plural form. Let's have a look at an example here. Tengo un hermano mayor y una hermana menor. Sí, tengo un hermano mayor y una hermana menor. I have an older brother and a younger sister. Tengo dos hermanos mayores. Tengo dos hermanos mayores y dos hermanas menores. Y dos hermanas menores. Tengo dos hermanos mayores 
y dos hermanas menores. I have two older brothers and two younger sisters. So as you can see here, we're saying dos hermanos in the plural. See, I have two brothers, older brothers. So we have say mayores and then I have two younger sisters, hermanas menores. Muy bien, perfecto. Now let's move to the part where we ask basic questions about you and your family in Spanish. Pregunta número uno. ¿Con quién vives? ¿Con quién vives? Who do you live with? ¿Con quién vives? Here are a few possible answers. Respuestas posibles. Vivo con mi esposo o vivo con mi esposa, vivo solo, vivo sola, vivo con mi familia, vivo con mis padres, etc. Pregunta número 2. ¿Tienes hermanos? ¿Tienes hermanos? Do you have siblings? You can answer this question in an affirmative way and you can say sí. Tengo un hermano y una hermana. Yes, I have a brother and I have a sister. Or if you have if you want to give a negative answer, you can say no, no tengo hermanos. No tengo hermanos. So pay attention here that we have two no's in this answer. We're going to have no the first one because we're answering to the question, ¿tienes hermanos? No. See, do you have siblings? No. No tengo, see, I don't have. So the second no is to negate the verb. No, no tengo. No, I don't. Pregunta número tres. ¿Tienes tíos? ¿Tienes tíos? So here, remember, we're using the masculino plural for general. and That means, do you have aunties or uncles? Respuesta afirmativa, sí, tengo un tío y una tía. Sí, tengo un tío y una tía. Respuesta negativa, no, no tengo tíos. No, I don't. I don't have any aunties or uncles. So pay attention here that in the negative answer, we are also having it and keeping it in the plural form because it's general. Pregunta número cuatro. ¿Tienes primos? Do you have cousins? Sí, tengo ocho primos y una prima. Yes, I have eight cousins and one cousin. So remember that in Spanish we're going to have female cousins and male cousins. So ocho primos is male cousins and una prima would be a female uh, cousin. Respuesta negativa, no, no tengo primos. Pregunta número 5. ¿Tienes hijos? Sí, tengo un hijo y una hija. No, no tengo hijos. Pregunta número 6. ¿Tienes sobrinos? Sí, tengo tres sobrinos y dos sobrinas. So remember, sobrinos is going to be nephews and sobrinas, nieces. Y la última pregunta es la pregunta número 7. This is the last question. ¿Tienes mascotas? Sí, tengo un perro y una gata. Yes, I have a dog and a cat, a female cat. But if you have a male cat, then you have to say, sí, tengo un perro y un gato. And la respuesta negativa, no, no tengo mascotas. And something important to remember for your conversations in Spanish, when we have a conversation, if we have things in common, instead of repeating it, see, for example, if someone has a pet, yes, they have a dog, si, sí, tengo un perro, instead of you saying, ah, yo tengo un perro, you, have, you, you can say, yo también, yo también, me too, yo también. And then if they, if they say, for example, no tengo mascotas, I don't have pets, then instead of repeating, if you don't have pets either, then you can say, yo tampoco, yo tampoco, me neither, me neither or neither do I. 
fabuloso good job thank you so much for watching today's class and now i want you to comment below um, answer to these two questions that i would love to know about you from the questions that we had a look into today number one numero uno tienes hermanos let me know if you have siblings and number two tienes mascotas do you have pets let me know in the comments below using the answers that we have learned today Muchísimas gracias por ver esta clase. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next class. Adiós. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Mi nombre es Romina. Soy tu profesora de español para la clase de hoy. Hi, ¿cómo estás? How are you? My name is Romina. I'm your Spanish teacher for today's lesson. En la clase de hoy voy a explicarte los pronombres demostrativos en español. For today's lesson, I'm going to teach you the demonstrative pronouns in Spanish. So first things first, what is, it? What is a pronoun? Pronouns are words that replace nouns and the idea is to avoid repetition. Demonstrative pronouns, as their name uh, indicates demonstrative comes from latin and it means to show to pinpoint um, so basically um, the the demonstrative are a an, an specific category of pronouns that what they do is they pinpoint exactly what we are talking about okay so basically we use them a lot when we are pointing out things okay Vamos a ver esto con un ejemplo. Es mucho más fácil de comprender con un ejemplo. So we're going to see this with an example because obviously it's a lot easier to understand with an example. Qué lindas flores. Estas me gustan mucho. Lovely flowers. Oh, what a beautiful flowers. I like these ones very much. So in this example, estas is the demonstrative pronoun which is replacing flores. It is replacing the word flowers in the second sentence. What estas is doing is to pinpoint exactly which flowers are the ones that I like very much. Which flowers out of all the flowers I'm uh, surrendered with are the ones that I like very much. Another thing is to um, use the, this demonstrative pronoun, um, estas, to avoid the repetition of the word flores in the second sentence. Y, so another thing um, for, for you guys to notice in this sentence, is in, in this example, is the fact that I'm mentioning the word flo, uh, flores in the first sentence. So um, when I'm using, the, I'm using the word estas, you already have a context. You already know what I'm talking about. Bien, continuamos. Let's continue. Did you notice the ending of estas? ¿Has notado la terminación de la palabra estas? Esa terminación AS, the ending in AS. ¿Qué es eso? What is that? So, estas está en femenino y plural. So, estas is in, a, in the feminine form and also in the plural form. So, the reason for this is because the demonstrative pronouns in Spanish have to match with the noun they're replacing in gender and in number. Okay? Las flores because the flowers, flowers are, um, it's a feminine and a plural word, okay? Um, I'm going to have to use estas to replace it because that's also in feminine and plural. I believe that this is what makes the pronouns in Spanish just a little bit more difficult than English, if you compare it with English. Um, and this is because in Spanish we have four options to, to select from, right? Um, depending if it's ma uh, masculine, feminine, singular, or plural, okay? So if it's masculine and sing singular, you're going to use este, the very first example, este, the very first word, sorry. Um, if it's masculine and plural, you're going to go estos, and then if it's feminine and singular, you're going to say esta, and plural is estas. Let's practice the pronunciation. Este. Estos, 
esta, estas. In Spanish, another complication that we have is the distance, okay? So depending on how far away we are from the object that we are referring to, that, that we are talking about, we are going to use three, um, either one of the three uh, demonstrative pronouns we have in Spanish. So if the object is nearby you and you can touch it, for example, you are going to use este. So when it's cerca, when it's nearby you, when it's cerca, you're going to, to use este. But if the object that you're talking about is very far away from you, you're going to be using aquel. So, si el objeto está lejos, so lejos means far. If it's far away from you, you're going to use aquel. So if the object is somewhere in between, it's not too close and it's not too far away from you, then you're going to use ese. We have three options, while in English we have only two. So I will leave that the closest translation you have for this is that este is used as, is translated as this, while ese and aquel are translated usually as that, but I think aquel is mostly translated as that one over there. Okay, so you're saying that it's very far away. So the crazy thing is that we have four options for each one of these three options. Again, depending if it's a female, a, sorry, a feminine or a masculine, or if it's singular or if it's plural. Okay, don't forget the translations. These, that, those, that one over there, those ones over there. Vamos a practicar la pronunciación, okay? Let's start with the very first ones, okay? The ones at the very top of your screen. Repite, por favor. Please repeat after me. Este. Este. Esta. Esta. Estos, estos, estas, estas. Vamos con el siguiente cuadro. Let's move on to the next um, chart, the next table. Ese, ese, esa. Esa, esos, esos, esas, esas. Ahora vamos al tercer cuadro. So now we go to the third uh, table. Aquel, aquel. Aquella, aquella, aquellos, aquellos, aquellas, aquellas. Please remember that because I'm from Argentina, my pronunciation um, is a little bit different and um, for the double L, I would say aquella, no? So in other countries of, um, just remember that in other countries of Latin America and in Spain as well, the pronunciation will be different. And instead of aquella, um, you will hear people saying aquella. Okay, let's practice that pronunciation for a second. Eh, vamos con el femenino singular. Let's, let's start with the feminine and singular. Aquella. Aquella, aquellos, aquellos, aquellas, aquellas. In this lesson, I'm, I'm just teaching you the demonstrative pronouns that um, are uh, feminine or masculine, okay, that belong to these uh, grammatical genders in Spanish. 
Uh, I want you to know that uh, there is a third gender. There is another gender in Spanish, which is the neutral gender, okay? Um, however, <laughs> these are just a little bit more complicated, okay? Uh, demonstrative pronouns of uh, the neutral gender is just a little bit difficult at this stage to be understood or used. Um, so this is something that we prefer to teach you later on in your on your Spanish journey, okay? So just be patient. It will come eventually. Un poco de paciencia. Bien. Es momento de practicar. We need to practice. Please complete the sentences with the correct uh, demonstrative pronoun. Underneath each uh, incomplete sentence, you have the translation in English. Um, just take a moment. Pause this video right now before I show you uh, on screen the answers, las respuestas correctas, okay? Muy bien, vamos a ver las respuestas. Okay, very good. We are going to see the answers. Let's check out the answers. Número uno, esta Copa es mía. Esa es la tuya. Número dos. Aquel que está al final de la calle es mi auto. Número tres. Estas son mis hermanas. Se llaman Agustina y Julieta. Número cuatro. Esos son mejores que estos. Número cinco y final. So this is the last one. Este es mi papá. Esa es mi mamá. Y aquellos son mis abuelos. Bien, amigos, es el final de la clase. Muchas gracias por ver esta lección. Um, okay, my friends, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for watching this video. Y nos vemos en la próxima clase. Adiós. Thank you so much. I will see you in our next class. Bye. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Mi nombre es Romina. Soy tu profesora de español de hoy. Um, Hi everybody, how are you today? This is Romina and I'm your Spanish teacher for today. So in today's lesson, I'm going to give you memory tips um, to make it easy for you to memorize the numbers in Spanish from zero to 100. Besides uh, helping you to memorize numbers up until 100, I'm also gonna give you tips um, to um, on how to memorize or how to say correctly the years in Spanish, okay? That the, the most basic years. So from zero to 15, unfortunately, we have no other option but to memorize the numbers by heart, okay? Vamos a practicar la pronunciación. Por favor, repite después de mí. So let's practice pronunciation. Please repeat after me. Cero. Uno. Dos. Tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, trece, catorce, quince. The only memory tip, it's a small memory tip that I can give you, it's uh, the fact that the numbers from 11 to 15 end in C, in the sound C. So C, E. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, continuamos. Okay, let's move on. From the numbers from 16 to 19, um, where what we are basically doing in Spanish, we're saying 10 and the, the number afterwards. So it will be in this example, 16 in Spanish is 10 and 6, okay? Um, 
the the thing is that as you can see on screen is a uh, um, 10 and 6 are three words but we said them fast and we fuse these three words into one okay and as you can see on screen z becomes c and y becomes i vamos a practicar la pronunciación let's practice the pronunciation por favor repite please repeat 16 17 18 19 so the same thing happens when we go to count numbers from 21 to 29, okay? We are literally saying in Spanish 20 and the, 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 name, the number afterwards, 20 and 1, 20 and 2, 20 and 3, etc. One thing to keep in mind is the pronunciation of the number 20 in Spanish against the rest of the numbers of, uh, um, with 20, so 21, 22, 23. 20 in Spanish has its ending in E, 20, 20. But the rest of the numbers do it in I, okay? 20, see? So that's something to keep in mind, okay? Uh, vamos a practicar la pronunciación. Let's practice pronunciation. Repite. 20, 21, 22. 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 Again, in this example, um, with these numbers, you can see that um, the three words 20 and 1 are fused into one word. Okay, we say that very quickly. And then the vowel E and the consonant Y uh, can kind of fuse together into I. Okay, so here you can already see that it's very important to know by heart the numbers from 1 to 9 because we're actually using them all the time. I believe that from this point onwards, numbers in Spanish becomes, um, it, it gets easier to memorize the numbers in Spanish. Numbers get easier from this point onwards because we are using the exact same structure I was mentioning before about 20 and 1, 20 and 2, um, etc. But um, this time we are not fusing or changing the words in any way. We have three words and that's the structure, that's the way we write it, okay? So 31 in Spanish is 30 and 1, 30 y 1, 32 it's 30 y 2, 30 and 2 and etc. Okay, and the same thing happens with the rest of the numbers. So 40 it's, um, 41 sorry, it's 40 and 1, 42, 40 and 2, 40 y 1, 40 y 2, etc. So it's bastante fácil. So it's fairly simple, we, we can say. Bien, let's practice the, the tens or the decimals, no? Eh, repite, por favor, please repeat. Treinta. Cuarenta. Cincuenta. Sesenta. 70, 80, 90. To make um, memorizing easier, uh, you're going to notice that these numbers end in NTA. Okay, they all end uh, on the same three letters NTA. So that ta sound, no? 30, 40. 50. Another thing to keep in mind is the difference between 60 and 70. It's quite common to get these two mixed up. Um, so just uh, bear in mind, 60 is se, se, 60. And 70 is sete, 70. 
a lot of students also get confused with the pronunciation of 90 in Spanish. Um, they will say nueventa, like um, they're trying to uh, put the pronunciation of number nine into 90, nueventa, y, and unfortunately that's incorrect, okay? You have to say o, oh, no venta. Okay, continuamos, continuamos. So I want to give you a memory tip for, for the number five, and it's um, the numbers related to number five. So we are talking about five, 50, 15, and 500. Okay, I know we haven't seen the hundreds in here, um, but I thought I should include it here um, so you have, it, you have everything in one place. Um, so 5 and 50 share the same uh, st uh, stem or, or root <laughs> and then 15 and 500 also share the, the stem or, or the root, okay? So we have 5, 50, so 5, 50, 5, 50, but then 15, 500, okay? Vamos, repite por favor, 5. 50, 5, 50, 15, 500, 15, 500. So the idea of this diagram is just to help you memorize in these numbers, just so you don't get confused. We reach to number 100. Um, unfortunately, I have no tips to give you for 100. Okay, so you just have to memorize it by heart. Uh, but you know, it's fairly easy. It's, a, it's only how many? Four letters? Por favor, repite. 100. 100. Muy bien, perfect. Okay, so now um, we're going to quickly. Um, uh, go through how to pronounce the years in Spanish, but obviously I'm not going to teach you how to uh, say every single year <laughs> from zero to you know <laughs> uh, the infinity, the infinite, because uh, it, it will be end up being a very long video. But I'm going to teach you the two most important years, um, especially for beginners. Okay, so that is, is saying 19. Uh, 1910, 1970, 1930, or 2010, 2020, etc. Um, this is because obviously these are the years that you're going to be using more often uh, in the beginning of your Spanish journey. Um, okay, so here on the on the little box at, at the top of your screen, we have two examples. We have 1970 and 2010. Okay, let's pronounce 1970 in, in Spanish. Vamos a pronunciar en español. 1970. Repite. 1970. So basically what we're saying here in Spanish is a thousand nine hundred seventy. Okay, that, that's what we're saying. Let's continue with 2010. So we're saying in Spanish 2010. That's what we're saying, okay? Repite. Dos mil diez. Dos mil diez. Okay, perfecto. So um, the structure is fairly easy. Um, for uh, 1,900, you just put whatever number follows after that, right? So um, you want to say to the, uh, 1,010, uh, 1910, uh, 1920. So you just say 1,900 plus 10, right? So 1,910. 1920 1930 etc okay and the same thing with 2000 okay just say the number at the end 2000 
2010. 2020. 2030. 2040. ¿Ok? Repite, por favor. 1910. 1920. 1930. 1940. 2010. 2020. 2030. 2040. Thank you so much for watching um, this lesson. Muchísimas gracias y nos vemos en la próxima clase. Thank you so much and I will see you on our next class. Adiós. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.